Hi, it's Max. It's another CSR2 video. Today I am here with the Bach Mono, which is the PC car for this season. But what this video is going to be for is um, showcasing how I tune a car. Uh, a viewer, John, asked me uh, a question on my channel saying, Hey, I noticed you tune your car to a what you call theoretical top speed. Can you elaborate a little more on what that means and why you do that? All right, so what I do is <clears throat> the cars change every time you change parts, right? So if you take away certain parts or you add a certain parts, the car changes, the tune changes. So when I tune a car, there are a few things I look for. One of the things is if you had a brand newly built car, the first time you tune it, everything is set something like this. 50-50, 50-50%, and wherever the final drive um, stock's location is. So this is kind of like the factory stock setting. What I tend to do is, before I get into even tuning the car, I lower the final drive a bit. I usually increase this, and I kind of look at the EVO. If it's dropping, that usually means this is already past its optimal point, but you still do a quick dyno to kind of get a feel for where the car could top out at. So the car can top out somewhere near 278 with its power level. That's only something to kind of give you an idea. Your car isn't likely to go faster than that because it just doesn't have the power to do it. So you're not likely to be tuning your final gear way past that unless there's a reason to do it such as you're specifically down tuning or the car like the F12 which tunes to a different gear than the final gear. The next step is you want to figure out this car is a acceleration car, low grip, or high grip, low acceleration is the most beneficial. And that, it goes back to EVO. You care about the EVO points. If you move it to the right and you watch the EVO drop like that, then this is not a car that likes lower grip to get more acceleration. That means it has such an aggressive acceleration already, you need more grip to put the power to the ground. So you move it the other way and watch the numbers go up. What you can do is you can move that quickly to a point where you want to see if the numbers are dropping again. That means you have more grip than the car can handle. So you can bump it back up to where you can see some changes here. Okay, so here's where it changed. But then again, don't forget, I'm running a pretty low final gear. Let's put it to stock and see how low we can get the grip. Pretty low. Still going up. So you're going to keep pushing it until you hit a point where it stops doing that. Well, it goes all the way to zero. What do I do now? Well, well, easy. You start putting more final drive in. You're going to start bumping it to the right and see if it changes. Hmm. Not much. Now, but if we start bumping to the left a little bit, it is increasing. Oh, so now it dropped. Let's move it up to one, see where it's at. Keep playing. This is fine tuning at this point. You're going to keep playing with this until you see the numbers get to the highest point possible. So, what I can tell is this isn't the highest, right? If you move it to the right, it lowers it. So, you're going to move it to the left of the stock and it seems to increase it. But you can't do it too much or you have to lower the grip. But if you're lowering the grip and you find the number tend to end up higher, that's a good thing. That means the car's getting faster. So you want to play with that. That's the fine tuning. That's where you're going to be balancing the final drive and the grip of the car. Some cars will end up at a grip number very quickly. Uh, the LB Aventador, for example, will end up at 53. And if you bump it to the left, bump it to the right of that, and adjust your final drive, you're always going to end up going lower. So th some of these cars out there are tuned to a low grip setting, and they usually send, end up right at 53, 54. You have to find it on your own. Unfortunately, I can't show you, unless it's a specific car with specific parts, exactly where to put grip. But most of these high grip cars, and we're talking about cars like the Mono, the um, Hurricane, and, you know, even the... The F12 is kind of in the middle. So 
some cars will end up in the 20s, some in the 30s. And that's the fun part about this game is figuring out the trick point where the car does its best performance for what it has. Now, I've been ignoring nitrous so far, but when you're starting to get to the point where you're only off by a few points when you tweak these things, then it's time to get on nitrous. Okay, you don't want to leave nitrous untouched at this point. So nitrous starts at 50-52. If you move it to the left and you watch the points drop, then move it to the right, see if it goes up. It does. Keep moving it. Slow it down, a little, little bit at a time. See if the points keep going. You can push this all the way to the point where the points stop going up. And then you can go back and try to fine tune your final drive again. So I got a pretty low nitrous uh, duration, but with a little more power. And it seems to really love it. The Evo is way up. I'm down to 10.059. Now I'm going to go back here and see if the extra power is going to affect how this works. So I give it a little longer. And no. But what happens if we raise it? Is it going to beat it? Hmm, it does. 1380. 10.054. Hmm. So with the extra nitrous, the car may go a little faster. So why not move the final drive a little more this way and see if they will go faster with a little bit, a little bit less grip. You have to play with things at this point. This is not where you just kind of go one direction and leave it, but it certainly is worth it to go in different directions to figure out where the car can get to. So I am kind of topping out here at 10.048. Okay, This is probably close to an optimal tune at this point for this car. Now I may be able to test it again with a little bit less, a little bit more. See if it will get past that 83. Oh, it did. See, I'm now with the nitrous, I'm bumping the top speed, final speed up, and I'm getting a little quicker at a time. So that's, again, fine tuning. Let's see if it'll get past 1391 at a little higher. Not at 1392. 10.030. Fine tuning. A little more. Give it a little more. A little bit less. 1393. It's, I don't think it's going to go much more. But this again is where you fine tuning it to where the final drive and the tires kind of match at the perfect spot to give you the highest evil. If you can reach the absolute highest evil point, that, it, that will be pretty much your best tune for this car. For the parts that you have, obviously. 1386, we're still making progress here, so you can still play with it. Um, but you also want to dyno often to keep seeing if the extra evo is actually helping with the actual bottom line, which is this time. If it's getting slower, even, I mean, it shouldn't, higher evo should always be quicker. Um, you know, you at some point you're going to reach a point where it's just not going to give you anymore. And then at that point, it's probably not worth it to keep going. Thirteen ninety three might be ultimately what I can get out of this car. Ten point zero two seven with the current parts that I have and the fusions I have. Now, <clears throat> what happens when you have all this extra grip margin, and you've been seeing the Evo jumping back and forth on this car? Well, you can do something like this and give yourself now a dyno beating setup. That is the grip to induce down to. Um, I use this technique on a lot of cars, but where you need to be first is where the highest EVO is at. So you don't want to do a down tune where your car is already in a sloppy position, and then you down tune it. Sure, you'll win. I mean, you still win, but you're not optimizing 
your EVO and therefore your gains uh, in respect points would be hurt by that kind of a tune a lot more. I mean, you can certainly do one of these jobs, okay, and you'll be dyno by a huge amount, no doubt, but, you know, with an EVO like that, you're just not going to make any respect points. It's better to kind of have it where you can kind of have your uh, cake and eat it too because you're beating dyno, but you're not giving up anything. So, okay. 1393 is where I want it to be, but 1392 is fine. And then you just drop it one point. Right there. Okay, 10.439. It'll still do the 10.0, uh, and I'll show you that right now. So this is good. This this is a setting I would use for supply cup. Uh, it will allow you to easily beat supply cup because you'll be running about four tenths under dyno. Car is very easy to drive. This is why I love the car. Um, launch it at about 6k or 5.8 6k. Uh, you don't have to shift perfectly. You go right through to that. No problem. Okay, so there you go, the Bach Mono and how I tune, and how I tuned it now to also be Dino for Live and Supply Cup. I hope this uh, video helps you out in your tuning. Um, I know that this is only one car, and it's only one method that I use to tune it, but the principles are very simple and, and always the same for each car. You kind of figure out where the upgrade you have can allow the car to reach top speed wise then you figure out if the car is the type that actually goes below top speed to get its best time or goes above top speed to get its best time generally speaking car that ends up with a grip at the right side of 50 will be high speed cars they'll spend their tires in the beginning but then they'll end up at a really high speed because the acceleration number is so high and it's the reverse for cars where the grip is going down to 93 grip, going up to 93 grip with a 7 acceleration. You will then have to be a little more aggressive with the um, final drive ratio. So the car will end up with a slower top speed, but it will do its best time that way. And some cars, again, that little extra notch of um, tire control, when you already have the car balanced on its EVO edge, you can get a small down tune, which allow you to have easier supply cups and much easier time racing in life. Well, <clears throat> I hope this uh, video explains uh, tuning from my perspective. Uh, game, this game's tuning isn't that complicated. It can be time consuming if you're looking for the optimal way to place the balance between tire and trans. But the most of the tuning, most of the guys out there that are finding, quote, um, the best tunes are the ones that are balancing this and that. Okay, the nitrous is the final piece of the puzzle, and you should periodically adjust it as you play with the final drive and the tire to find that perfect balance point between the three. Um, and that may also take a few, quite a few dynos and test drives before you get there. Again, Tuning is fun for me. This is why I like the game. I think this is the one thing about this game that differs it from other drag racing games where you just add parts and you get faster and the other guy can't beat you. Um, with the adjustment of tuning in this game, it adds a certain variable, which is uh, what introduces a fun factor to the game. So I hope uh, this video was helpful to you. Uh, feel free to ask questions on my channel. Um, and also, if you want to see more of these videos and get notified uh, when I make new ones, subscribe to the channel so, so that you get the notifications uh, popping up when I add videos. Uh, I'm always uh, happy to try to do videos based on people's requests, so feel free to ask me to make a video on this or that, and I'll do what I can to make it uh, a video that would be helpful to you. Well, thank you very much for watching.
and uh, good luck this season with the PC Cup.